In this video, we should see the input and output impedances of uh, CS amplifiers. Now, this is input impedance of an amplifier. So, let us consider a two port network. So, having port number 1 as the input port, having uh, the incoming current as I1, the voltage input port 1 input voltage as V1, and this is uh, the current going inside is I2, and uh, V2 is the output voltage. So, this two port network, uh, the amplifier is a two port network. Now, we were, here we are considering uh, the input source V in here, the small signal input, and there is a load resistor connected as RL, so where we take the output voltage. In order to find the input impedance, uh, first and foremost thing is that we should not have the influence of uh, other circuit. So, we are open circuiting the uh, load so now this load is open circuited now here we are applying a, a dummy source vx and uh, we get the ratio of vx by ix so the ratio of vx by ix happens to be the input impedance that is the input impedance seen by this dummy source is nothing but the input impedance of this amplifier so we are supposed to estimate what is uh, the ratio of vx by ix which happens to be the input impedance the condition is that the output should be open circuited now similarly to find the output impedance of an amplifier so this is the input voltage applied so here this is uh, the load resistor now in order to measure the output impedance now this is uh, a dummy source vx is connected in place of the load resistor now that load resistor is replaced by this uh, vx so here again we are measuring vx, vx by ix which happens to be the r out now most importantly we are supposed to uh, short circuit all the independent voltage sources now this input voltage is one of the independent voltage source we are supposed to replace it by short circuit meaning that since we are finding the input in output impedance of this amplifier there should not be any influence of the input voltage that's why we are short circuiting uh, the independent voltage source which is v in here now it has been short circuited meaning that uh, the input voltage is made zero the ratio of vx by ix happens to be the output resistance now we shall take the cs amplifier now this is a cs amplifier having r1 r2 as the balancing resistors cc is the coupling capacitor rd is the resistor which is the load resistor now uh, which is allowing the drain current to pass through this so that mosfet is in saturation now this is uh, the r out what you are measuring from this terminal looking into this and this is the amplifier actually the amplifier is actually r1 r2 rd and this uh, mosfet so will go to uh, form the amplifier the input impedance that is seen towards the input is uh, r in that is measured at the output p is r o now we are writing the ac equivalent model i can see r1 r2 will be represented by uh, a single resistor r1 parallel r2 and this mosfet is replaced by its uh, uh, constant current source here in this case we are assuming uh, lambda equal to zero because uh, that's the first case now that is being represented by without r naught here now we are supposed to find out uh, what is the input impedance to find the input impedance we are supposed to because here you can see we are not connected any load here since there is no load connected here so this is open circuit here and this is a dummy source vx applied so we are supposed to measure what is vx by ix so writing the loop equation to this uh, input loop so we can see that uh, vx is given by ix multiplied by r1 parallel r2 so naturally the vx by ix happens to be the input impedance which is r1 parallel r2 meaning that the input impedance of this cs amplifier with lambda 0 happens to be r1 parallel r2 which is r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 so this way we can find the input impedance of this CS amplifier. So let us see how do we find the output impedance. So as we know that uh, the procedure for finding the output impedance is you connect a dummy source uh, at the output, you short the input uh, by the input is replaced by a short circuit. Now we are supposed to measure the ratio of Vx by Ix. Now since input is shorted, the VGS happens to be 0. Since VGS is 0, uh, GM into VGS, this current source also becomes 0. So current source 0 method will want to represent by open circuit. You can see now this is being represented here. Now this is shorted, VGS is 0. Now that is represented by a open circuited current source. 
now uh, as we know that so writing the kvl for this so we can uh, easily write this expression vx is equal to ax into rd so naturally vx by ax happens to be the r out which is equal to the rd so r out is nothing but rd now the output impedance of uh, cs amplifier with lambda zero happens to be rd and let us see okay this is a cs amplifier with an external load so here you can see I have externally connected a load here. Now this RD is uh, a resistor which is supposed to uh, be allowing the current to flow through this. The actual load happens to be this uh, resistor R load which is connected uh, to the drain point. Now how do we find the output impedance of this particular uh, amplifier which is connected to an external load with an external load. Now as you know that now this is uh, looking into the circuit from this is R in looking into the circuit uh, from this point is R out. So we are writing the equivalent circuit here. Now this is what is the equivalent circuit. Now this capacitor is replaced by short circuit. You can see now it is represented by short circuit. This is also short circuited and RD and R load coming in parallel here. To find the input impedance, we know that we are going to open circuit the load. Now this is the actual load. Now. So R load is the load. Now you can see we are open circuiting. In the previous case, so you cannot open circuit a RD. So RD is the one which is allowing the current to flow through this. If I open circuit this, there is no current going through the amplifier. So meaning that uh, in order to find the input impedance, we are open circuiting the actual load. The actual load in this case is R load. So now if you find the uh, input impedance of this, which happens to be R1 parallel R2. And similarly for uh, finding the output impedance, you replace this load by a dummy source Vx. So you again find what is uh, the Vx by Ax ratio. In this case, since Vgs is zero, this is represented by open circuit. We end up with Vx by Ax is equal to Rd. So that is R is equal to Rd. Now we shall continue our CS amplifier input output impedance with uh, considering lambda. So when you consider lambda. So we know that uh, there is the R0 which is connected between drain and the source. I can say this is the equivalent to small signal model uh, with lambda non-zero. To find the input impedance, we know that okay, we are going to open circuit this, which is already open here. Now this is uh, now this R0 and R D will come in parallel here. So when you measure, uh, when you apply a dummy source Vx at the input, so Vx by Vx, which is uh, the input impedance, happens to be R1 parallel R2. So meaning that you can see when lambda is equal to 0 or non-zero, it makes no difference for the input impedance. So there in the previous case also it was R1 parallel R2. Now also it is R1 parallel R2. Now let us have a look at the output impedance. So we know that to find the output impedance, we are short circuiting the uh, input here. So making all independent sources as zero now. Now uh, since uh, input is zero, the VGS also becomes zero. When VGS is zero, this will be open circuit. Act. Now, if you can actually find what is Vx by Ix, so this happens to be Rd parallel R0. Now you can see this is Rd in parallel with R0. So R out happens to be Rd R0 by Rd plus R0. Uh, the previous case when lambda was uh, zero, we had only Rd. Now the R out has to be reduced from Rd to Rd parallel R0. Now this is the effect of channeling modulation under output impedance. The input impedance is same as the previous one. The output impedance reduces from Rd to Rd parallel R0. Now this is a summary of uh, CS amplifier. So when, I, when we say the input impedance, so we are considering uh, lambda, z, lambda x is 0 in the first case. So you can see when you are seeing from uh, this side, because this is the amplifier, when you look, look towards the amplifier, the input impedance is R1 parallel R2. When you look at the output terminal into the amplifier, it is actually at this point you have two points, one is towards RD and towards the drain. So uh, standing over here and if you are looking towards the drain, it is RD. When you are looking down towards the, this is uh, towards the supply, which is RD now. Looking towards the drain down here, it is infinity because lambda is equal to zero. You know that when lambda is equal to zero, looking towards the train, the impedance is infinity. So what is R out then? Then R out is Rd parallel infinity. So Rd parallel infinity happens to be Rd. So similarly coming to lambda non-zero, 
the input impedance is as in the previous case as it is seen here R1 is in parallel with R2 looking into the output impedance which is nothing but looking up towards uh, towards the VDD it is RD looking down here towards the drain it is R0 the output impedance looking from here towards the amplifier is RD parallel R0 so this is what is R0 is equal to RD parallel R0 meaning if you want to see the input impedance so we need to look into the network if you want to find the output impedance you have to look into the network from this output node which happens to be this impedance which is looking up and looking down the overall impedance happens to be the parallel combination of this it's again parallel combination of RD and R0 so this way we can find the input and output impedance at uh, the input and output terminals of the amplifier we shall see what is uh, input and output impedance of the source degeneration CS amplifier now this is a circuit here now we can see we have a resistor RS which is acting like a source degeneration resistor now to find the input impedance we know that okay we are, we are open circuiting this output which is not connected over here now you, you apply a VX here a dummy source try to find out what is VX by NX in this case the ratio of VX by NX happens to be R1 parallel R2 so let us also find what the output impedance we know that to find the output impedance we are short circuiting the input voltage let us see that see here this is a AC EPN circuit uh, to find the output impedance we are short circuiting the input voltage we are applying a dummy source VX and we are to measure VX by IX now you can see uh, okay we are considering a case where lambda is non-zero we are considering R0 between drain and the source so please make sure that this R0 is connected from drain and the source not from drain to the ground now this is the EQN circuit now instead of analyzing the circuit as a whole so we know that of course this is looking into the network at this point is R out so here let us assume that okay, there is one more resistor which is R out dash so it is looking towards the amplifier at this point now it will be easy to find out what is uh, R out dash rather than R out so what the difference between R out and R out dash is R out is nothing but R out dash in parallel with RD so this is uh, R out dash what we are looking towards the network towards the amplifier this is uh, R out dash in parallel with RD so let us find out okay how do we find out R out dash now this is a circuit diagram to find R out dash so what I am doing is I am applying this VX over here excluding this RD now you can see VX is applied here now let us try to find what is R out dash so we know that this VGS so this is the IX uh, current we are assuming as you can see now this is the current which is going high one and this is vm into vgs the same current flows through rs also so the voltage drop across rs happens to be ix into rs so since this drop is exactly coming in the opposite direction to this vgs vgs can be written as minus ix into rs so since vgs is minus ix into rs writing the kcl at node 1 so we know that this is the uh, incoming current these two are the outgoing currents so ix is equal to i1 plus j into vds so we can rewrite the expression over here where i1 is nothing but uh, uh, the current through r0 so r0 has a potential difference of so vx at this end and at this end it is uh, ix into rs so this is what is the potential difference across r0 due to the resistance supposed to be the current through uh, r0 and of course plus the current that is going here so the current is gm into instead of vgs i am representing it by minus into minus ix into rs so uh, grouping them ix in a uh, left hand side so we can obtain the expression as uh, ix into 1 plus rs by r0 plus gm into rs which is equal to vx by r0 so by rearranging uh, these terms so you can see now r0 dash is coming out to be r0 plus gm r0 plus 1 into rs now this is r0 dash but r out is actually r0 dash in parallel with rd so that's what you can see here r out dash is rd in parallel with r0 plus uh, 1 plus gm into rs into uh, 1 plus gm into r0 whole multiplied by rs now this actually this is rd this is r out dash overall inference is 
RO, which is 